Because I can't believe she's going to get in that pond. She is going to get in that pond. Huh. It's not hot out. <laughs> what are you doing? Hey y'all, it's a beautiful day in Texas. Lester made a video earlier this week talking about some horse shuffle. And I thought we would walk out here at Longhorn Lester's and kind of talk about potentially what would be required if we did indeed move forward with that horse shuffle. So come on, let's get some exercise. Let's get some blood flowing in your body and Let's go for a walk. I uh, just am realizing that I probably don't need this extra jacket on, but I was wearing it earlier when we had coffee and well, I just haven't slowed down to be honest with you. You know, Rita and Stormy are in a pasture, actually in the bullpen and I'm a survivor. And then we have Voodoo and Bucky's and four donkeys in the rest of the bigs pasture there. <sighs> Technically, Rita and Stormy could go in with all of them. We would just need to consider removing the round pen. It just, it creates a little bit of a, of a cluster area up front and I don't want anybody to get stressed or anxious or penned anywhere, even though it's a circle in their space. It's where they all hang out. It's where the barns are. It's where they are fed. It's where they're worked. It's where they're, you know, it's where they feel comfortable too. So, we got some considerations to do over there first. But, we also are talking about, in the springtime, moving the horses back here. And we don't have horse stalls, but we do have a barn with stalls. So, let's talk about it. So, I'm standing in the barn that was built for longhorn cattle and cattle loading. The theory here was that... Lester could feed the cattle in stalls and open up gates to allow them to come to the middle and park the trailer over here so that we could load them or unload them or treat them in a space that um, was able to be segregated for just them. And it works. It works perfectly great. Why is that out here? How did that, where did that even come from? Oh my gosh. Tex. First of all, this was originally brought here when we first moved here to store feed in. And I know that we haven't stored feed in it in a while, but I didn't know that there were still feed bags in it and that Tex destroyed it. Whoopsie. <laughs> I mean, I say Tex, it could be Santoro, I'm not sure. But what I was saying is this was originally built for Lester's Longhorn processes in mind. Now, they're nice size stalls. They are concrete on the bottom, so if we were to convert this to a horse barn, we would need stall mats and shavings and to really consider the openness. Now, in the spring and fall, this is sufficient enough. It gets them out of the, the weather. It has a north wall blocking it for the wind. It provides shade. They can keep their food dry. That's great. It is not so great for a few other reasons, though. So, in the wintertime and in the summertime, when we have the most extreme temperatures, it's essentially just a space for shade. Uh, it does allow air movement in the summer, but the horses don't want to hang out in here because they're basically being baked because it's a metal building. So I know a lot of people build barns with what they call turnouts, you know, turnout stalls. So they have an inside and an outside capability and they create runs that are longer for each horse to have their own space and to not be interrupted. We've talked a little bit about that, but I'm not sure that that's the right solution for us here. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about doing is if we did bring the horses back to Longhorn Lester's, and again, there's a lot of ifs in here. I think that we would want to close in the walls at least this side. This is the northeast side. So the wind comes from here. The cold winds come from here. We could close this in. It would give them more temperature control um, for those harsh climate times. 
and it would allow us to have some some true indoor space now if it's my perfect world if it if i'm really dreaming i would close all the walls in put a like a garage door a bar sliding barn door here and create individual doors that go outside kind of like what cog hill has and um you know really really go up higher um these boards would actually be something that I would enclose all the way. So I, just like we have it on a survivor stalls, I would take from here down and go wood all the way to the floor so that we don't have any, any feet getting caught in between here and nobody's biting each other through the stall type of thing. And then I would go bars up to the top to, to truly give us the space. Now, again, that's a dreaming space and probably not realistic. And the biggest dream of all would be enclosing this and in, in installing HVAC so that way during the really harsh climate times that I have a space of AC and a space of heat. That is a dream, folks, and it is a very distant dream, and I know that I'm nowhere near that. And it's not, horses do not require AC and cool. It is a dream, so keep that in mind. Oh boy, the wind's picking up and the leaves are falling. It is definitely fall, winter. Well, hi, Ritzy girl. Did you hear mama out here all rambling on? Oh, how are you? You must be feeling good today to have come all the way out here. Some other hindering factors about this barn is that the closest water spigot to this barn for fresh water for the horses is all the way over there at the well. And that is a problem. Now we can run a water line all the way over here. It just also would have to like go around the pond to get here, not great. Uh, and it has no current electricity whatsoever. So the horses don't enjoy coming here at night. I say the, you know, when they were here because there's no, they like to be in the light. So this would require a pretty expensive uplift to truly make it a horse barn. And it's not, not all of it has to be all at once. You know, power and water would necess would be absolutely necessary for if we were going to make this the horse stalls and truly be able to house them all in a way that they're getting very used to at the sanctuary. So then, and we have enough. So, so there are four horses and four donkeys and there are exactly eight stalls here. So there is, there is plenty of space here for everyone to have their own space if they wanted to. I will tell you that Beverly and Ivy enjoy being together or Ivy enjoys being in with Bucky's too. So as I dream a little bit more, I consider and, and would want a light that is brighter than that one on the outside. It's a solar light and by about 3 a.m. it's completely done. Um... So I would want something something additional for the outside. Ritzy, what are you doing in there? She's in there rolling around, probably in something gross. She's like, oh, there's something special left for me out here. Oh, mm-hmm, you're gonna stink. They all can probably smell you through the camera. Boy, she's having a good day today. Um, then we have run into the issue here that we planted ryegrass and we planted ryegrass for the cows. Just unsure at that point in time of how things were gonna go at the JL ranch, if it was gonna become ours. I can't believe she's gonna get in that pond. She is gonna get in that pond. Huh, it's not hot <laughs> What are you doing? I guess she's washing the stink off or at least attempting to. Um, and when we planted ryegrass, you know, like I said, we had cows in mind, but ryegrass is full of sugar and to let our horses graze all of it is not great. We would have to be able to have those stalls to be able to keep them off of it for quite some time because especially Voodoo, um, that sugar intake could really do some damage to his feet. What are you doing? Shake it off, baby. Shake it. Oh, just keep on rolling and stuff. Yeah. Good thing it's nice out. You're going to spend some time outside today. So, 
it also might not be a good time to bring them until the ryegrass is gone. And then we're up against the, is the grass really going to grow back from last year? And is it enough for them to graze? And I can't believe how she's acting today. She's acting like all young. This is crazy. Um, so there's just a lot that's built into this and the ryegrass probably isn't as big of a deal for Rita, for Stormy, and for Bucky's, but it's still a big deal. Um, it's way too much sugar for them because it's like brand new grass that is only meant for one season. And even in the spring, it's a hard time. And I know what you're saying, Jamie, you have dry lots across the pasture here, and we do, but when you have eight, eight large animals plus five ostriches, plus goats, those dry lots sort of shrink even more. And I'm just not sure that they're big enough. I have to consult Dr. Cochran and Courtney and Ashley and really, really talk through that because I think that Beverly and Dixie did fine in the dry lots and we were able to maintain all of that, um, but they still craved being out. And we have three dry lots and they're all about an acre a piece. So I would think that two, two, and two of the big animals would be okay, but I have more than that. <laughs> and I'm just not sure. I have, I have so much to think through. So I don't know. I'm out here dreaming of a, a real horse barn because I want them to be here every day. I don't want to have to drive to the sanctuary and, and put all of the other things in our life on hold adulting things like the, my responsibilities of being a homeowner and the things that I love as well, gardening, family time, all of that, because I'm dry, you know, I'm taking the time to drive and spend time over there. If they were here, I could do it in between my calls. I could do it first thing in the morning before work. I could do it after work still. And, and, and I want to be able to look out my window and, and see my animals. It is hard to not see them. So I have these goals and these dreams and these vision, but I also know that this pasture over here is probably not grazable, truly grazable. We need to keep everything off of it probably for a year. The goats are fine. They don't, they're not eating grass like that. They're actually keeping the weeds down, which is perfect. But to let things get true roots, we need a year. And if I'm being real honest, this needs a recovery time too. Probably until at least fall. This is probably till next spring, like 2025 spring. And then it brings up the whole JL ranch and could the horses be over there? And that too is gonna have to require some structure and some thought. And I will walk that with you and talk about it in a different video. But for now, I just have to say thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to me ramble and talk. And if you have a input, please tell me. And don't get me wrong, I know that if we had to bring the horses back here, we can make it work. We can. It's just not 100% perfect. And it's also, when you look at the sanctuary and the inconveniences of my driving, if the sanctuary is still the best place for horses today, and it's just an inconvenience for me. And I can't be selfish in that. And um, if they were here, it is... It's a selfish move and it doesn't, there's too many parts that don't line up with what we need to do. So one day, one day when I get the shit show all aligned, then perhaps that will be the next thing that happens. But for today, just a little dream. <laughs>